I'm glad that God made me feel so much better. We even denied I was dragged. I got some of the drag out. I'm glad of that. Amen. Amen. We'll be here tonight. But there's something I'm going to preach on tonight. I kind of preach a typology message this morning. And I'm going to preach a typology message tonight over in Proverbs chapter 30. We're going to read verses 24 through 28. And you find your place. You can uh, stand in reference to the Word of God. There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. The conies, and that is nothing but a regular a rabbit, what it is, is but a feeble folk, yet they make their houses in the rock. The locusts have no king, and yet they go, all, go forth all of them by, pop, by uh, vans. The spider taketh hold with her hands, and is in king, the king's palaces. Father, bless your reading yes. tonight yes. as we yes. preach. Yes. Use the message yes. for your glory yes. and for your honor. May God we preach only what He wants to preach and use the message to bring honor and glory to your precious name. Thank you, Father, for the song we've already heard. Thank you, dear God, for letting us be here. Now use us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. In this particular text I've read you, it talks about in the book of Proverbs. There are four things that are little, but are very wise. But I want you to look at the last thing that was mentioned in Proverbs 28, uh, yeah, verse, verses 28. It says, the spider take hold with her hands and is in king's palaces. The fear of spiders is arachnophobia. I have a brother. My brother in high school, or in, in, when he was in his teens, he probably weighed 240 pounds. Big old busty boy, but he's more scared of a spider than of any woman I know of. <laughs> I have seen him literally tear his clothes off his body trying to get out the spider off of him. But the Bible talks about here there's a great God allowed this to be wrote in his inspire in here. And we only read this about the spider tonight. When God talks about not only he talking about the spider, but what I'm interested in more than anything is the way of the spider weeds. Now we see here tonight in the Bible the spider represents two things. It represents first of all that which is poisonous and second of all, that which is dangerous. Now, the Lord compares the devil and what he does as like a spider. <coughs> now, you'll get what I'm coming to bring out of this message here in a few minutes. <laughs> There's a research done on spiders. And I want to bring out some facts. I never knew this. But it ties on in. That's why God preached this in the Bible about the spider. I want to preach tonight on the thought getting caught in Satan's web. Getting caught in Satan's web. Now we realize tonight the Bible talks about the devil being a roaring lion. But we see something of contrast here as it talks about the spider taking hold with her hands. And it says, and is in king's palaces. Now we're going to talk about the spider. We're going to talk about the characteristics of a spider. We're going to talk about other things that tie right in. That will be a blessing to you if you listen, please, tonight. First of all, we want to look at 
the details of the fire. They say, in the, you can look it up in the, in the encyclopedia or go online. You can read all this online. A spider is a ha is or have a detailed plan. It became, they are different types of web a spider may may weave. But they know what type of web to weave. What kind of what what they want to trap, they know what kind of web to weave. And they know where to place the web. It's like a spider web is a trap. The devil knows exactly what kind of trap to set for me and you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he knows exactly where to put it at to, to trap us. And not only that, that spider knows what kind of prey it's after. I'll tell you something tonight, friend. You may be here tonight and think you are exempt from the devil trapping you, but honey, I'll tell you one thing. You ain't no match for the devil, neither am I. Amen. Amen. And the devil is out to destroy. He has got a short season to, to live, and he's out to destroy, and he's doing a good job of it, Lord. Amen. Amen. But we see you, they know the prey that they're after. Just like the spider knows exactly what prey, what, what, uh, what kind of prey it wants, the devil has a plan in mind for every one of you. He has a plan in mind for me. You don't know how many people tonight that Maybe a year or two ago, they sat in church houses all across this country. And everything was going fine until they fell in the trap of the devil. Let me tell you tonight, friend, it's an awful thing. Amen. I'm not talking, I let me tell you, I don't care what age you are tonight, young or old, it don't make no difference. The devil desires to trap you up. So we see here, not only do they have a detailed plan, they have a detailed process. What they do, they find the best place to set the trap. In a dark corner sometimes. And they set their trap. It's a process they go through. They look, they, uh, I didn't know this, a spider's smarter than that. Let me tell you, the devil ain't no dummy, friend. Yep. The devil is the intelligent being. And that spider, they say the spider will build that nest according to the way the wind blows. That's unusual, isn't it? But we see tonight, and we look and read in the scripture tonight, we see here, not only he surveys the area, he'll check the wind. Or she'll check the wind. And then they build the well. And let me tell you what, they just, what they do when they build that web, here's what I'm finding, you don't know this, but when that web, it, 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 its body excretes a sticky substance on that web for the purpose of trapping the prey. Hmm. It, it does that. And after they weave the web, you know what they do? They go back in that corner and wait. Have you ever looked on maybe on the internet and watched that? And maybe that insect that caught in the web, and all of a sudden that old spider scurries down that web and grab that, grab that insect. That's like a devil, he's waiting like a lion in the tall grass. And he set the trap, and he, he got the bait set. Let me tell you, the devil knows what kind of bait to set to trap you for him. And we see here, he had a plan and a process for everybody here. And you know what? I, everybody, the young people, the older, he's preparing to trap everybody here tonight. He will. Preach, I'm old in the Lord. It ain't going to happen to me. Don't matter what age limit, how many, how many, don't matter if you're a rookie or you're a veteran, God's got your number. And the devil knows where you're at. And he's out there to destroy you. But the spider, 
He had the, 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 the detail. He had a plan. He had a process. And he prepared to trap you. You don't know how many people tonight I've seen over my ministry in the last 40 years, one years. That day, man, I would have told you when they first started out, hey, they were right there in for the long haul. But can I tell you one thing? Look at me tonight. There ain't none of you can say it ain't going to ever happen to me. There ain't none of us that I can say it won't trap The devil can't trap me. Honey, he's got a lot of luring ways. He's got a lot of ways to trick you and fool you. Now let me tell you, don't tell me none of us can say that we never will be trick, trick or fool because we can be tricked. Right. Amen. So we see here, look at the details. Not only we see the details of that spider, but we also see the uh, deception. The spiders are deceptive. That weave, that web, that web is woven. It's deceptively woven. Some spin a web that purely functional, and you ain't gonna get away. Some spiders, they say they decorate their, they decorate your web to lure, and that's the way the devil does. Yeah. yeah. Hey, he'll make it look pretty for you. Yeah. He'll set it up. He he knows what your weaknesses are, and he knows what to catch your eye. And he'll set it up. That's what the spiders do. He knows where to track his prey. And he'll set it on his well. He sets it back. You know what he does? He sets it back. He waits. How he knows that that insect is going to catch, going to catch his eye. I'll tell you what, if you don't keep your eyes on Jesus and keep focused on Christ, you get your eyes on him, you'll start looking at that trap. And if you don't watch out, you'll get in that trap and you'll be caught. Yep. Yeah. I'll tell you what. They decorate the webs to attract the prey. And you know what? There's some webs that are shiny. Did you notice that? That some spider webs are actually shiny. And you know what? I didn't know this. I've learned something. They say insects can see ultraviolet <coughs> wavelengths of light. I didn't know that. Spiders are much more reflective in UV light to track the insects. You know what attracts a lot of men, a lot of women? Look at me tonight. Is that lust of the eye. Yeah. That is what traps a lot of people. You would be surprised at the people tonight. They were serving God and loving God and trying to be what they should be for God. But a little something happened in their life. They got their eyes off God. And the devil set the trap. It looked pretty to them. It looked shiny to them. It looked like something that they liked. But when they get in, the devil springs the, the, devil springs the trap. That's good, brother. I'm going to tell you one thing, friend. That's what here attracts us and traps us. Like, look, now tell these young folks, and we got some young folks here, the devil will trap you if you don't watch. You girls don't never go, don't never try to say, well, I want my rumble. You find out he may be a rumble. You may think he's a rumble. Hmm. Praise God, he'll be, he'll be, he'll be, he'll be going out to that worst nightmare. <laughs> you like you the fellas. You like you. You want your Juliet? I'm going to tell you one thing, friend. Hey, Amen. You see some, some, some people are very attracted on the outside, but inside, they put the poison. Amen, preacher. That's right. And I'm going to tell you one thing, friend, tonight. A lot of people, a lot of these young people have made mistakes in their life. They said, I want a good looking man, good looking woman, and then no one I can want to make pretty or I'm a nice person. Well, tell you what, the most important thing you need to search for is that person loves God and to stay with you and loves you and loves God more than anything else. Hey, I'm going to tell you one thing, friend. You say, preacher, what happened? You get lured in that trap of lust. And you look at that and you say, boy, ain't they, that man is attractive. Or oh, that girl looks good. And you get in that trap of lust. And when you know it, the devil springs the trap. And you call it his will. Amen. Yeah. Amen. A lot of people, a lot of men, a lot of adults, they get caught up in money. Well, money, 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 that's all. Yeah. There's no, this, 
and I'm going to say this, I mean this, there's nothing wrong with having money. There's nothing wrong with being blessed by God. There's nothing wrong with that. But when it comes to the point you put other, put that before you do your service to God, it becomes your little G-O-D. That's right. right. Many men, many women, serve God. They take a job, keep them out of church. Take a job, keep them away from their families. And then all of a sudden, the devil got them and he'll set the trap. They'll be away from their families, men, off on the road, driving truck or whatever. And there'll be someone, some foreign city, some city. All of a sudden, the Jezebel come by and you, sit, and you wait away from home and the devil start putting thoughts in your head. Don't you think you a man? Amen. You, you, we still men. Amen. And if you say it won't bother you, you're the crazy one. Amen. 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 Am
they tell, I had two or three of them talking about their little, their little daughters and all, going off with a boyfriend all the time. I said, you go keep on messing around, you're going to be a grandpa. No, not me. <coughs> it happened. Because the devil, his web is strong. No human, no mortal man can break his will outside the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So we see here. What's inside us is stronger than Satan, folks. Amen. What lives in us. You see what's inside the spider is stronger than the insect. The Bible tells us there's something stronger than the devil. He said in 1 John 4.4, 4, he said, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. That's why Peter was telling us about, or Paul was telling us to be, uh, to be weary, of the, to be warned about the wiles of the deceptive tricks of the devil. He said here in Ephesians 6.11, Put on, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wild or the trickery of the devil. We see the deception. I think sometimes, I believe some of us sometimes, in our lives of Christian, we've almost got into a trap and we've had to ask God to get us out of the trap. Amen? Yeah. Amen. 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 We have. Yeah. Cool. You're not exempt from it. <clears throat> I ain't exempt from it. Every time I hear about a preacher going bad, running around on his wife, believing his life, I say, Lord, help me, help me, God, give me strength, God. Just don't never let me fall in that trap. Hey, man, let me tell you what, Carl, you don't never know. The devil may be looking at your window right now and say, hey, I'm going to set her up, take him up. I'm going to destroy him. I'm going to put out a beautiful trap. It's going to be a true trap. Let me tell you what, trap for him to resist. Let me tell you what, if you get your focus off God, you're more apt to go to that trap than you are to stay with God. Right. We've seen we've seen the details of the of the spider, and the, we see also the deception. But we need to see the diligence of the spider. They are persistent creatures. They'll do whatever is necessary to spin their web. Sometimes they'll use the wind to blow them in a certain area to get to where they need to set that trap. They do that. And if your web gets torn down, they'll go right back and rebuild it again. Yep. And if it, if it every day it gets torn down, they'll go back and build it again. They never give up. The devil never gives up on you, my friend. Right. The devil never gives up. You know what? Spiders are persistent. Even when the Satan tempted Christ in the wilderness, he didn't stop by the first temptation. He kept it, what, three times? Yeah. He kept coming back, kept coming back. Now, that be a time in your life that God gives you a time of victory over that, but you better watch out. It may just be for a season. He'll come back and strike again. Yeah. That's exactly right. Amen. Satan will lay a new trap for you every day. He wants to trap you. You know what happened when that web gets broken? Man, I went outside my house one night, brother Mike. I saw, I ain't gonna lie, I saw a spider web that day. Mm -hmm. So you could look at the, 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 the outside light was reflecting up, and you could see it on my porch. I said, my goodness. I told that. You know what? The next day when I thought he'd already been in the He persisted. He don't give up. He works overtime. 24-7, he don't work, give up. Mm -hmm. That's what the devil does, folks. If he can't get you today, he'll try to get you tomorrow. Yep, mm -hmm. The next day, the next day. He can't get you on Sunday, he'll get you on Monday. Most of the time, that's what he's trying to most of the time. Or any other time. But we see we see the three things already the detail, the deception, the diligence. But look at the danger. Look at the danger. 
Some spider bites, which is, is no more than a little sting, but some can be very dangerous. I remember years ago, Brother Sam coming here one Sunday morning, Sister Mary. He said, Preach, I think something bit me. I remember him rolling up his sleeve, and I saw that. I said, That thing a big old knot on his hand. I said, Brother Sam, you better look at it. I mean, there was already red streaks running from him. Well, he went to the hospital trying to find out a brown recluse spider he bit. And whether well, y'all remember or not, he left a child here about a month in the hospital. I went to visit him. He went to tell me when I went to go one He said, Preacher, all the, they, the last thing they did, they put the antibody run straight to my heart. And he said, if this don't work, they can't do nothing for me. Mm -hmm. So a spider bite can be fatal. Some spider bites are fatal. And then a brown recluse spider, they said, it caused fever, nausea, kidney problems, even can cause amputation to limb. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the very smallest spiders cause the most damage. The devil will try to make you feel like that little thing you do and you know, ain't quite right, ain't no harm to it. Yeah. <clears throat> That, that little thing down the road is like it's like a lemon that grows. And it's, it, it, it completely devoured you. Get caught in Satan's web. What you do, you know how you do it sometimes. And how people do it. They kind of get away from God, they start looking at little things. They start reading things that they ain't no business looking at. They start clicking on that internet, looking at those boofy pictures. And the more they look at it, they look at it, they go back the next day or two. Look at it again. And before you over, oh, it's a daily thing. And you've already grieved, you've already defiled yourself with yeah. spiritually. Yeah. That's the way the devil works. That's why I said this, y'all might not agree with me, because some of y'all, or some of you young, you let them have your cell phone, but ain't no young alive deserve a cell phone with the internet under 16 years old. I'm sorry. Amen. But preacher, my young man, you know what young man just like anybody else who's young? Yeah. I've known, I've known, I've, I've warned parents before, don't get that boy, don't get that girl a cell phone. They want a cell phone when they need it, but it's going to call, let's give them a flip phone. Amen. 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 Get him a flip phone. That's good, brother. They go around and hear you coming. Oh, I saw a phone. I didn't get a Mine's all going to turn off and ring on. I don't have to forget it. They go that cell phone. They go in that bedroom and close that door. I start looking around that website. Yep. And they get looking at it. And there's another link to another thing on the website. They go to that. Yep. Before you know it, they watch the thing they got to be watching. That's right. And then you as parents begin to see things happen. You can see things that ain't quite right in your home no more. Yeah. You'll begin to see things and you go to church and you feel like something ain't quite right. What it is, it's right under your nose, honey. Yep. The devil defiles your home. Amen. By setting those small, amen, that, that, them little fighters, they, they ain't going to hurt me. Let me tell you one thing, friend. Hey, Amen. Let me tell you, that little blabber coach fighter ain't that big of a fighter, but it killed, it's a killer, amen. Amen. Satan so wants to take you to, well, I tell you, well, that's my anger sense. A sin, sin, it, it's a transgression of the law, overstepping of the law of God. Say it won't hurt you, it's a trap. That's a trap. There's more danger. He'll show you the danger. If you take the base, you'll get caught. Once that insect gets in that trap, there's no getting out. There's no getting out. He's doomed to perish. Under and let me tell you, that's not quite so for God's people. You can get out of the trap. God can deliver you from it. But it's like this. It's according to the extent of the depravity, of the level of depravity that you've gotten to. Now, if, if what I'm trying here, here I explain it. If you indulge in it for one, one time, maybe and more than God deals with you, you can get out. You keep the more you indulge, the harder it'll be to get you out. Yeah. Amen. 
It's about like in about like a four, about like a little boy go mud mud bogging in there, them, them 40, 50, 60 dollar ticket. I ain't dollar ticket. I ain't never thought I, 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 I think that's the life of sin. That's just me. <laughs> but they get in that road and they start and all of a sudden they the more they spin, the deeper they'll deal deal. Yeah. And they have to get a bulldozer to come and get them out. <laughs> yeah. More you devil in that. The deeper you'll be, the deeper you'll fall. Satan's trap, this trap, deceitful. It's deceitful. It's dangerous. It is that I tell you what, I guarantee you right now tonight. There are people that used to serve the Lord and not you. They would say, I wish to God. I would never walk in that trap. I would tell you something for you. Do you know the Bible? I, we, I'm going to show you something else. Now we see the dangers, the tail of deception, the diligence, and the danger, but look at the distance of the spider. Spiders are everywhere. I read a research that said you'd be surprised, some of us, and speak how, how many times we swallow spiders. I don't even know. Yeah. That's about nasty, but it's true. Yeah. I guess that's why a lot of times we get with bad taste in that Bible. Amen. But spiders everywhere. Even the Proverbs say you can find them in the king's house. Amen. So that means it can strike anybody, any nationality, any, any financial. It don't matter who you are tonight. They can spin a, well, they'll spin a, they'll spin a web in the house of the rich as it would in the house of the poor. Mm -hmm. I don't know where this website got this at, but it said, you're never more than three foot from a spider. I'm not looking around for my I'm not worried about a spider in your house, but I sure will worry about a spider in my house. Yeah. Laying there in bed, looking up at the ceiling, and all of a sudden you see a big old spider. I have a stroke. I have a stroke. <laughs> I wouldn't sleep none of that thing today. I tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But you got to worry about that's what going to show you. You need to worry about your home, your family. Because Satan launched attack on my home back in the beginning of time, beginning of when men created. But we see here also, you better be worried about how Satan's going to attack you. You better be worried about the spider in your house, folks. Satan closer than you realize. If I remember one time, I looked above Santa's house this morning. We went over to see him. It was, it, was, it was dark, and we went in there to see him. Better be, we'd come out, Brother Mike. I like to die. I walked in my car in Frank. He ain't right anyway. Went out there and picked up the biggest snake ever seen in my life. And he come toward my house. My car, I rolled the window out, I locked the doors, and I'd have hated to have to, but if he tried to put that thing on me, I'd have probably had to fight him. Yeah. But I walked right by the snake. <laughs> and I seen that snake, you'd have heard me all the way before you leave it. We don't know how close the Satan is to us tonight. Yeah, right. right. We don't know how close we all trip. trip. You can tell you what, we don't know. He don't, you know what makes the devil mad? He don't like to see people in church on Sunday. He don't like you like, love us loving each other and getting along with each other. Yeah. He don't like that family right. loving each other. He don't. And he's trying his best to set the trap. He may set the trap with your wife, with your husband, your children. You better be wired. Be, be on alert, friend. Be on alert. The Bible said, be sober, be vigilant, because when we say the devil is a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. It was one thing for Peter to say that Satan was walking around, but Jesus told Peter that night, you remember that? He said, Satan desires to have you. And that's, that's still the same mission of the devil as it always been. Satan's a uh, uh, a spider is always trying to find a place to spin his web. He builds his web slowly and not noticeable. That's how he catches 
He's praying. Same thing happens in marriages. A marriage don't split up overnight. He began to weave that well of discontentment. He'll get you having problems financially. He'll get you at each other's throat. Amen. He'll get you discontent. You'll stop communicating and talking to each other. And eventually your home's torn apart. You're locking churches tonight. Churches did not lose their power overnight, my friend. And the churches don't go liberal every, overnight. Churches don't use the press, lose the presence of God every, uh, overnight. People get so occupied in big and other things. And they begin to complain and complain and criticize. All that time, Satan, he was even that way up. He would love for y'all to get mad at me and turn on me. Please don't. He would love for us to be there to destroy. But I'm glad by the grace of God, God's going to help us to help God help us. God. We, this is a good church. We've got a good church, I tell you. Yes, yes, but tell you what, the devil could be a tyrant. He could. But I'm going to close in this. So something else, last but not least, I'm going to give you this fact. You didn't know it, but here it is. Mm -hmm. And this, if you ain't got anything I preach tonight, Get this, what I'm saying. Do you know when a spider kills an insect, his mouth is too small, he can't eat the insect. You know what he does? He injects poison into that spider, and that poison will liquefy the inside of that insect, and he'll suck all that out. I know that sounds kind of gross, but that's what a spider yeah. does. You see, you know what the devil wants to do to you? He wants to destroy us in, from the inside out. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's exactly what he wants to do. Sin begins in the heart and in the mind. The, like that spider, he'll catch, he'll, catch, he'll catch a great old big bug. I'm talking about a big bug. And the properties of that poison, Brother Philip, will dissolve the inside and he'll, he'll suck all the inside out of it. I know that sounds kind of nauseating, but I'm trying to make the point to you tonight how Satan works. He works on our inside. He, it, all that's going on in our life, but we get distracted and we look at other things that begin on the inside. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Saying all this, friends. He wants to destroy us from the inside out. He does. He starts on the inside. You take a man or a woman, boy or girl, and make a baby. They'll get what they did not continue with that. They'll start looking for something to satisfy. They'll start taking drugs. They ain't like it. They get hooked on it. They think they're having a good time all along, Brother Mike. That poison is in that body. Sir. Destroy that heart, that love, that liver. Alcoholics, drunkards, what the Bible calls them. They drink their whiskey, they drink their beer, their, they drink their wine. They say, boy, I'm living it up. All the while, that alcohol is a poison in the system. Mm -hmm. They don't see down the road they're going to be looking at all kinds of fumes in the hospital with their liver completely destroyed because of endurance, indulging in alcohol. You see, the devil never shows you the end results. Because if he does, there's been many people with following his trap. I pray every day, God, keep me near you, Lord. I want to stay near you, Lord. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> the devil can put out that. Don't be caught in the devil's way of Don't be caught in this way of Because I'll tell you what, friend. 
I see a I see fellow uh, just recently. Used to preach the Word of God. Used to serve God. He got out of church, got serving God. I saw him one day, had a big old bushy beard, a red bandana tied behind his head, had that too all over his body. Now, I ain't saying the boy ain't saved. I'm saying that's sure what the devil will take him to. Yeah. Don't get caught. Don't get caught. There's been many times, Brother Philip, I've got in the Yeah. Amen. Now, don't you say you have because we all do. Amen. But you know what? I'm glad that I have a Savior I can call on. Yes. And he got me out of that mess. But by the grace of God, friend, right? It's all by the grace of God. It ain't come in the name. Amen. All right. Satan got that way. He said he got they have a trap set for some of y'all or not. He may he probably got a trap set for me too. <clears throat> you be sure. And I'm gonna bring it, I don't bring it my personal life to nobody, but I want to mention this tonight. When my wife died back almost be some six years ago. You'd be surprised to me. The text I've got from women. <laughs> What'd you do? Delete, delete, delete. Amen. Amen. I feel like God sent me somebody who wants to be a happy man. Right. He don't. I'll just live by myself. Get old and grumpy like the rest of them. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you something tonight. The trap set. You've had my single house before. I know all of them have. You know what Bob might just sit a baby out there? I said peanut butter, and they love peanut butter. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes a long time, but eventually, yeah. again, eventually, he'll sprain that trap. The devil may set that trap out a long time. He may have it, but see, what he's relying on you to do, he's relying on you to get out of fellowship. And get to this continue with serving God. And you begin, you, you, you look by, you look at it in turn right, but every, all of a sudden you begin to take a longer look. Until you finally get to the point you step. Lot messed up. When he separated the land between him and Abraham, Lot he messed up. He he fixed his tent toward Sodom and Gomorrah. I wonder why did he set his tent toward Sodom and Gomorrah? Why did he set the tent door? He should have kept behind. He wouldn't have to say that man. But it always showed you he wouldn't rob God anyway. But eventually he went from the tent door to the city gates. And he, he, he joined himself. He became a politician in the corrupt uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. He lost his family. He lost his wife. You know what happened to him when he went out over the Zohar? He got drunk and them girls committed an act of incest on their own daddy to try to keep the seed alive. You see what happened? I'm just saying this tonight, friend. Don't be caught in Satan's way. Yeah. I say this because I love you. I don't want to see nobody get caught in You know when you're most vulnerable to Satan's traps? It's when you're discouraged. When you have doubt in your mind, when, the, when you sit, sometimes you by yourself, the devil will play mind games on you. Yes. Yeah. You know. You get sitting there, he'll about get you thinking about all these things you shouldn't be thinking about before. Yeah. Then that thought becomes a word, an action. Then that action becomes participation. Then you're caught. I'll ask you something tonight, friend. I'll tell you something tonight. I don't want to be another, I don't want to be a statistic. Yeah. I don't want to be a statistic, brother Phil. Amen. Satan, the devil has his way of love. You may break through and give God give you a victory. I'll tell you what, he'll leave it again. He won't give up. When we give up, preacher, he won't give up until you cast it to the lake of fire. Yeah. 
Right. That's when he'll give up. But until then, he tells us to beware of the devil. And the traps. The straight. I want to ask you tonight. I look 